Hey everyone, welcome back from my first and, in my opinion, very well-deserved vacation after two years of non-stop doing YouTube. On that note, this is a full beginner's guide to setting up and programming Arduino pen plotters using 28BYJ48 stepper motors and a servo in order to actually get them working. Because all the other freaking online tutorials don't tell you nothing and stop tutorialing not even quarter of the way in. I've received several comments and two emails from people having troubles with these very popular, although kind of niche DIY pen plotters, so I am going to show you everything you need to know to get yours up and running in no time. As a result of being very detailed, this video might get a little long, but I need you to stick around and watch it all the way through, because if you haven't watched it entirely, don't even come to me complaining about your thing not working in the comments below, or even worse, asking questions that were already answered in the video. That said, I'm only a beginner at programming myself, and despite doing my best effort to deliver as much information as possible, I don't fully understand all of the things I'll explain to you in a bit, so if you did everything like I showed you to and it still doesn't work, I'm probably not able to help you any further since literally everything I know about the subject was already mentioned in this video. With that disclaimer out of the way, let's start with step 1, the Arduino IDE. Go ahead and install the newest version available straight away, since usually when you're having problems, simply installing the latest release or even just reinstalling the IDE tends to solve them. So there is really no point in messing around with an outdated version. I mean, you could still try it in a pinch, or if the version you have is only like 0.1 lower than the current one, then I probably wouldn't really bother, but in general, if you're having problems, simply uninstalling and cleanly reinstalling everything can work wonders. Then go to the link in the description or type Universal G Code Center Download into the search engine of your choice and download the latest version zip file from their website. Alternatively, you could also get it from their GitHub. It really doesn't matter since it just redirects you anyways. Now the reason why we're using Universal G Code Center out of the myriad of other G Code streaming programs out there is simply because it's one of the most popular free CNC controllers in existence. Since it is a .zip file, you have to extract it first before doing anything else. On Windows 10 you simply right click and go extract all. For all other operating systems I don't know, but usually there's more than one way to do it. With the folder unzipped, you can delete the original zip file as it will no longer be needed. And here it's worth mentioning, Universal G Code Center is one of these weird, seemingly half-baked pieces of software that doesn't actually install in your computer at all, but instead you need to open the folder and the folder within the folder, inside which you'll find another folder called bin, containing two launchers with the logo as an icon, one for 32 and the other one for 64-bit architecture. Since most computers nowadays run on 64 bits, you'll likely use this one. Double clicking it will then launch the program. But wait, that doesn't mean you can just delete all the junk folders around it, because they actually contain bits and pieces of the software. Yes, welcome to reality. Despite what you may have been led to believe, CNC is actually a pain in the ass. And the exact opposite of user friendly. I recommend saving this entire folder somewhere it doesn't bother you and plonk a shortcut wherever you want to access it from. Before we move on to the Gerbil library in Arduino, I kind of need to explain a little bit how CNC works in general. Why is this important? Well, I need to make sure we're on the same page since you can't really successfully build a house without knowing what a brick is. So here's a fun fact. This little pen plotter, as dinky and simple as it may look, is actually as much of a CNC from a control perspective as any 500 plus dollar machine capable of milling aluminum. And not only that, it is also a custom built CNC, meaning it's actually harder to set up and get working than a generic 3 axis CNC router you can buy on Amazon. So to make a normal CNC do anything at all, you first need to design a 3D version of the part you want to fabricate in some CAD software. This 3D version then needs to be converted to a special file format CNCs use called G-Code. This is usually done within the CAD package, or like in our case, via a plugin. But G-Code in itself still isn't more than a simple text file. 
so we need CNC controller software like Universal G-Code Sender to send individual lines of that G-Code file to the CNC one after the other. The CNC controller board needs to interpret what's being sent from the computer and tells the stepper motor drivers which stepper to move how many steps in what direction. The stepper motor driver then needs to apply the right voltages to the right coils of the motor in the right order to execute that command. That's basically what happens. Now on our pen plotter we have a few peculiarities due to it being indeed a slightly simpler construction than a normal CNC. First off, the Z-axis motor was replaced by an RC servo, which requires a totally different control scheme than a stepper motor. Second, all the stepper motors are unipolar instead of the bipolar ones you'll find on almost all other CNC's, aka they need a different control scheme as well. And as it turns out, there is not a single appropriate stepper motor driver for unipolar stepper motors available on the market, at least as far as I'm aware of. So all the stepper motors as well as the servo are directly connected to the Arduino by means of the Darlington Array which just amplifies the signal, basically offloading all the motor control to the Arduino. So while on a normal CNC the Arduino can just tell the motor driver to make the motor go a step in one or the other direction, our poor Arduino needs to do everything by itself which in turn requires a different firmware to run on it than on a normal CNC. And while Gerbil stays a popular choice for Arduino based CNC's, it really only works with regular CNC's using regular stepper motor drivers since Gerbil doesn't do the stepper motor control. So what we need is basically a customized firmware for our custom CNC. Enter Gerbil 28BYJ48 plus servo motor. Fortunately for us, smart people have already done the work and forced Gerbil to build a version that includes unipolar stepper motor control on both the X and the Y axis, as well as a servo Z axis. I already talked about this version in more detail in my last episode, so go check it out here for more detail. But long story short, by simply installing this special version of Gerbil on the Arduino, we get all the functionality we wanted. Almost. In order to do so, we need to install it as a library in the Arduino IDE first, which turns out to be pretty easy. The link in the description will take you to the GitHub where you need to download the zip version of the library. Once that's done, you unzip the folder just like you did with G-Code Sender and optionally delete the zip file. Then go to the Documents folder on your PC where you should find a folder called Arduino, inside which there theoretically should be a folder named libraries. In case there isn't, which there won't be if you just cleanly reinstalled the IDE after deleting everything left from the old one like I did, you could probably just create a new one making sure it's spelled correctly in lowercase. Another way if you're not comfortable trying that would be to open the IDE, go to tools, manage libraries and install any library from within here. This will automatically create a folder called libraries in the correct location. I already did this with Excel Stepper, which is why on my computer this folder already exists, since it wasn't there to begin with after reinstalling the IDE. Now if you didn't delete everything left from the old IDE, this folder might actually still be there. In case it is, if there are any botched previous attempts at getting your plotter to work in here, any Gerbil library, even if it's the exact same you're going to install now, you absolutely need to delete it. There is no way around it. Delete all old versions of Gerbil. This applies especially if you didn't reinstall the IDE for whatever reason. You simply cannot have two Gerbil libraries installed. Remember, get rid of the old crap and cleanly reinstall everything. If all these requirements are met, you can then open the folder you just downloaded and unzipped, open the identically named folder within, and simply copy the folder called lowercase gerbil that's inside over to libraries. As simple as that. Now I said copy it over and not move because we'll have to modify this library later and by copying you have a backup left in case you mess it up. Just so you don't have to download it again. That should be it, right? After all, that's how far all the tutorials tell us to go before uploading to the Arduino. Well, let's do flash it onto the Arduino and try out, shall we? 
you know just as well as I do that this is not going to work. But well, let's try it anyway to see just how many issues we run into when doing exactly as the tutorial gods advise us to. Fortunately, the next steps are pretty straightforward. First off, plug the Arduino or whatever the controller board of your CNC is into the computer. And I'm not gonna bother plugging in power to the motors just yet, since the microcontroller on this controller board runs completely independent of whatever power there may or may not be going to the motors. AKA, the Admega 328P on this controller board is always powered via the 5 volt coming from the computer's USB port. So, as long as I don't need to move the stepper motors around, I can program away to my heart's content without ever supplying power to the motors. Anyway, that always depends on how your CNC is built, of course. So the next step will be to open the Arduino IDE. Then you do the board setup. Uno, Arduino Uno on the serial port, whatever yours is. Then open file, go to examples, and all the way at the bottom, next to Excel stepper, which was already there beforehand since I installed it, there is Gerbil, and in here you find Gerbil Upload. Click it, and it will open a new window with all this writing in here. Now, you don't change anything here, just hit Upload, and you're basically done with it. It's going to compile it and not upload it. Why that? Function wake up, blah blah blah. That is not good. What is going on? So apparently we're already running into difficulties, even though we haven't even uploaded it to the Arduino. You know, I genuinely thought we would at least get it onto the Arduino, but no! Now the IDE is giving me shit about some supposed mistake in some weird function in Gerbil I never even touched. And don't you think I know why it does that? I have not a single clue. I need to figure this out myself. So, if there is one thing I want you to take away from this video, it is A. CNC is a pain in the ass. And B. These pen plotters, even though apparently, generally, they are seen as a fun little way to start out with CNC, they are literally the worst way to start out with CNC you could possibly have. These are just a pain in the ass. And just so you know what we're working with, we're working with a modified, buggy version that is also outdated by several years of Gerbil. Keep in mind, the current version of Gerbil as of filming this video is 1.1 and we're working with a modified version of Gerbil 0.9. So, yeah, just keep that in mind. And now I need to figure out why it does what it does, since I have no f***ing clue. And then I'll come back and tell you what you need to do differently to actually maybe get it working. Well, you will be delighted to hear that I spent two days chasing down bugs, bugs, and more bugs right after having fixed a couple of the previous ones, and now the pen plotter is actually functional. Wanna know what led to the premature failure of our attempt to upload Gerbil to the Arduino? Let me tell you, it was two slashes. Yes, two rogue slashes that shouldn't have been there in an admittedly rather important part of Gerbil made the entire upload fail. How did I find the error? Fortunately, it happens to be closely related to what we would have had to do next anyway, so we can just kill two bugs with one explanation. But before we dive deep into how Gerbil actually works in order to fix these problems, let's talk about PCBWay, the sponsor of this video. As you might have noticed, the controller board on this pen plotter is not actually an Arduino, but rather some unknown orange thingy. Guess what? That unknown orange thingy is a fully custom controller board I specifically made for unipolar pen plotters like this one using PCBWay's manufacturing capabilities. 
PCBWay makes high quality prototyping circuit boards with anywhere between 1 and 64 layers to spare you from having to mess around with nasty chemicals to try and etch your own PCBs. Recently their prices on 4 to 6 layer boards came down due to low raw material costs, so whether you're thinking about finishing that flight controller for your next bigger model rocket, or even building the PicoSat to go inside its fairing if you want to go orbital, now you can do so using multi-layer PCBs at a lower upfront cost. And as usual, huge thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring my content, as it really helps out the channel. As well as me, justify the exorbitant amount of time I spend telling random people on the internet how they can get their stuff working. Speaking of getting stuff to work, how again did I find out about those slashes? For that to make any sense, we quickly need to recall how this special version of Gerbil was developed. Or rather, budge together, to be blunt. Either way, many years ago Robotini here adapted the official Gerbil distribution to support an RC servo on pin 11 of the Arduino, which originally served to control spindle speed via PWM. As far as I can tell from looking at the code, he did quite a good job with the modification, incorporating it nicely into the existing Gerbil framework. Then, a couple of years later, Costi CNC came along, creating his own Gerbil offshoot capable of directly driving unipolar stepper motors on the X and Y axes using what the third person involved in this development tactfully called an ugly hack. I can only agree. It's pretty nasty what I did there. Even if you don't know too much about programming, basically replacing part of the code with a giant block of if statements is generally slightly frowned upon. Don't get me wrong, I have huge respect for people sufficiently understanding the inner workings of Gerbil to actually implement these modifications, and as long as it works, everything's fair game I guess. But the thing is, it doesn't exactly work particularly well. Notably, when I used the code in my very first pen plotter previous October, it was kind of broken and as the y-axis stepper motor was reversed and there was no way to change the direction of either of the motors via the direction mask thingy built into Gerbil. But back to the development of our special Gerbil. After most of the work was done, Ritzivo, the guy who called Costi CNC's work an ugly hack, came along and combined these two still independent adaptations of Gerbil into one. Now, there are two other small adjustments he, in my opinion, could have done while he was at it, basically creating a highly customized firmware for exactly this kind of plotter anyway, but by choosing not to do so, we at least got an interesting learning experience, which in itself is worth something. Plus, the poor guy wouldn't have gotten anything for fixing your problems, while I at least get 3 bucks of ad revenue from your watching this video. So, it's only fair. But, what about those slashes? Well, if you have healthy levels of curiosity, you should have taken a look inside the folder we copied over to libraries and noticed that Gerbil itself is one of those fragmented pieces of software consisting of random text documents thrown together into a folder. When you hit that upload button, everything somehow gets mashed together into a huge bunch of ones and zeros by the compiler and transferred to the Arduino. Except, if you look at it closely, the contents of this folder actually aren't random at all. Of most of these files, there's a .c as well as a .h file type version, and each of these files constitutes a specific functionality of Gerbil. If you open these with a simple text editor, you'll see that they are written in C, a programming language very similar to C++ you're familiar with from normal Arduino programming. As you can see, each file is named according to the function it takes care of. For example, there is one for configuration, one for interpreting G-code commands, one for controlling the spindle, which is incidentally the one Robotini modified to make the servo work, and stepper.c is the one with the ugly hack to integrate unipolar stepper motors. Looking at the error code the Arduino IDE brought up quickly revealed it was complaining about something missing in... What a surprising coincidence! The stepper.c file! Now, since it's not always a good idea to trust the IDE to highlight the actual error, and it could have been many things, maybe even the IDE itself, plus I couldn't remember having had this issue when I got my first pen plotter working last year, the obvious thing to do was to upload the exact same code I already modified last year to get that plotter working to this new pen plotter as well to see if it would go through without being flagged. Yes, of course I kept my adapted code. I keep everything as you might know at this point. And if it wasn't for making a video about it showing you how to do it, I would have had this plotter fully functional by the end of the last episode. 
But the thing is, this old personal Gerbil adaptation of mine was uploaded perfectly fine, and I had the plotter up and running in no time. So it really was the stepper.c file of the new one I just freshly downloaded for making the video, and comparing it line by line to the stepper.c inside my personal one revealed, among a couple of other changes, these two slashes that hadn't been there in mine. To be clear, this line basically creates a variable called dear underscore outbits, which is exactly what the IDE declared to be missing. And with the two slashes in front of it, it's basically turned into a comment, and thus missing from the code. So who the heck messed up the code, and why was my personal adaptation fine? I'm not going to blame anyone specifically for messing it up, but looking back at the GitHub we got this from, it turns out, two years ago the stepper.c file was updated to fix the erroneously reversed y-axis and broken direction mask. And the gerbil I eventually turned into my personal adaptation had actually been downloaded along with some other crap back in January 2019, sometime before this fix had been published. Now you know why I don't delete things like this old download. Sometimes things on the internet just disappear, and in this case it was incredibly handy to have the old version at hand, since it didn't include that specific bug the freshly downloaded one had. So what do we do to fix this? Right after installing Gerbil as a library, you open the folder. Very important, it's the one you just copied to Documents, Arduino, Libraries, not the one in Downloads and open stepper.c with a text editor. I would recommend using a basic one like Notepad or WordPad rather than something fancy like full-blown Microsoft Word or LibreOffice Writer, since these big word processors might make it unnecessarily complicated to save the changes in the .c file format. Then you scroll down to this exact spot here where the variable is, it's really pretty far up, you don't have to scroll very much at all, and, you guessed it, take out the two slashes. Click save and close the file. That was pretty easy, right? Next you open the config.h because we need to do another small modification in there for the homing cycle. Remember, a normal 3-axis machine first homes the z-axis to move the router bit up and out of the way of your work surface to prevent crashing into anything. But on a 2-axis machine without a stepper motor driven z-axis, the system will end up eternally trying to home the non-existent z-axis because the computer doesn't know there is no z-axis attached, so it just weighs and weighs and weighs for a signal indicating the end of the axis from the non-existent limit switch. And that's what I expected to be the first issue we'd run into after uploading Gerbil to the Arduino. So we need to disable z-axis homing altogether, which we can easily do in the config file. Pretty far up you'll find this section about homing, and since this config file is intended to be modified by more demanding people like us with non-standard CNC's, it's also nicely documented what each of the options does. Here we obviously have homing cycle 0, which will execute first, moving the z-axis up, and once that's completed there's homing cycle 1 for the x and y axis. Now the only thing we need to do is to put two slashes right in front of homing cycle 0. This will turn the line into a comment just like the variable earlier, and the compiler ignores it. And just when you think that's it, there is more! Actually, we have to comment out homing cycle 1 as well, because while it does indeed move both the x and the y axis simultaneously to home them, it for some reason also stops both axes as soon as one of them reaches the limit switch. Which doesn't really make sense as you'd think the other axis should finish its homing cycle regardless. I can't imagine how that's supposed to work even on a bog standard CNC, but maybe it's just some remaining side effect of the hacked and unipolar support. Fortunately we can circumvent this by creating our own dedicated homing cycle for each axis. Just type in exactly what I'm doing here and the result should first fully home the x axis and then the y axis afterward. And after saving these changes and closing all the windows, we're finally ready to upload it to the plotter for good. Again, plug in the Arduino, open the IDE, go through the board selection, and under Files, Examples, Examples from Custom Libraries, click Gerbil Upload. With the new window opened, click Upload, and now it compiles correctly. With everything uploaded, close the IDE, and we're ready for the final setup process. 
Now, the setup process is really long and tedious and mostly done via trial and error, so I'm gonna go through it rather quickly, otherwise this already long video would end up over an hour long. Plus, I already have the most important numbers for this pen plotter figured out on this piece of paper. But even before we go into that, I first want to give you some good advice so you don't run into any other problems along the way. First off, during the entire Gerbil setup process, most of the user interface in Universal G Code Center doesn't work yet, so all the communicating you do with the CNC needs to be done through the console by typing in commands. Yes, I am aware that UGS comes with a quick setup wizard, which can be used to make things easier, but for heaven's sake, just do it properly and deal with Gerbil directly. Otherwise, you're never going to learn to troubleshoot any problems that might arise further down the road if the only thing you ever did was push a few pre-made buttons. And besides, if you want to move the x-axis like 73 millimeters to the right, it's literally easier to type in G0, X73, F350 and hit enter than doing the exact same thing via these buttons. Next, make sure you have physical means of stopping electricity to the motors, be it an emergency kill switch or, like in my case, having the power bank providing power to the stepper motors right next to me so I can immediately yank out the plug should anything go wrong. Because if you don't prepare for it, I promise you will crash your CNC into the physical end limits at least once. Guess how I know? Because during setup, you have no idea which way the carriage will go, neither how fast it will go. Like I said, figuring this out is totally trial and error. And I literally wore out the strings on my first pen plotter by crashing it too frequently. And lastly, this is more of a general advice which doesn't really belong here, but a rather common problem seems to be the servo not working at all, no matter what you do. I've had this issue on my first pen plotter, and I could have smashed my head on a wall when I finally realized how stupid I'd been and how simple the solution actually was. You're using the wrong G-code commands for f**k's sake! Didn't I tell you this pen plotter does not have a z-axis? So how on earth do you expect the servo to do anything when you press a button to move an inexistent z-axis? Robotini specifically mentioned on his GitHub that you have to use the start stop spindle commands to control the servo. So if the file you want to draw on your plotter only moves the z-axis up and down, of course nothing's gonna happen with the spindle. Jeez. Seriously, if you stick to this video, you should never run into this issue in the first place. Didn't I say I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know? Now let's get going with the setup. In Universal Decode Center, make sure the baud rate is set to 115,200, which is what Gerbil is set to by default. Select the port and click Connect. Gerbil should now send a list of the default system settings that we need to adjust for our CNC. I'm gonna leave the first few at their default values, since those are fine in most cases, but the one I definitely need to change first is the homing cycle. I can't think of any CNC that works without homing, so you'll want to activate that in pretty much all cases. Since homing cycle, along with a few others, are booleans, which means they can either be on a 1 or off a 0, I'm going to type $22 equals 1 and hit enter to activate it. Next up is the soft limits. In case you don't know what soft limits are, basically if you have only one limit switch on each axis, like on this pen plotter, the soft limit is to prevent crashing into the opposite side as well. It does that by knowing how many millimeters it can safely venture out from the position of the limit switches based on a number we'll have to tell it later. Since of course I want these activated, I'm using the exact same method to do that. Hard limits on the other hand is what the limit switches are called, and without enabling them, we can't have a homing cycle, so we obviously have to activate them. The homing direction invert mask is used to invert motor direction if one or both of the axes run away from the limit switch instead of towards it during the homing cycle. On this pen plotter, for example, I mounted the x-axis limit switch on the wrong side. Usually all axes go in the positive direction during homing, which on this machine is back for the Y carriage and to the right for the X axis, but I mounted the limit switch over here instead to simplify wiring, so I need to reverse the X axis to make it go towards the limit switch again. 
To do that, we can use a lookup table in one of the various incomplete setup tutorials online to find the value we need to set $23 to. Next is homing feed in millimeters per minute. I'm gonna leave it at 25 because that always worked out just fine for me. You see, homing is usually done at two speeds. First, it rapidly drives the carriage into the switch, then it backs off and creeps forward again to really hone in on the exact position the switch closes at, and then it pulls off again to make sure it isn't sitting within the boundaries of the switch all the time. The rapid moving toward the switches is the homing seek. I need to set this to the maximum reliable speed this plotter can travel at, which is about 350 millimeters per minute. Now we're gonna skip a couple again until we get to steps per millimeter. This setting really depends on your specific CNC. Like I said, it needs to be figured out via trial and error, or alternatively, you could also use one of the amazing tutorials online to calculate a rough number to put in here. But I know that on my pen plotter, the x-axis does approximately 126 steps per millimeter and the y-axis 132. These are just rough values though, nothing more. I haven't had the time to really get it precisely dialed in. So if your plotter uses 28BYJ48 stepper motors in direct drive with 10mm diameter pulleys, you can indeed use values similar to these to start with. And again, we're totally ignoring all the settings for the z-axis, since it doesn't exist, there is no point changing values. Then comes the maximum rate at which your CNC can reliably travel without losing any steps. Again, on my machine it's about 350 millimeters per minute. We're gonna set that for both the X and the Y axis. Then we skip acceleration since it's pretty irrelevant on a terribly slow CNC like this plotter anyway. And the last setting is maximum travel. This is what sets the soft limits. So in this machine the X carriage can safely go 293 millimeters away from the limit switch without hitting the other side. And that's exactly what I'm going to enter. Likewise, the Y carriage can go 230 millimeters. And that is it! I'm going to reset zero using the soft reset button to check if all the values are saved correctly, which they seem to be, so now we should be able to home the machine using the homing button or by typing $H in the console. And nothing is happening because my power bank just lost power, but now it's homing, great. Once done homing, let's see if these buttons also work, which they seem to do, even going in the right direction. So we can just straight away use them to navigate to our zero point, which is the upper left corner of the paper, by the way. Now we just need to reset our zero point, and this pen plotter is basically ready to be used. But now, how do we use it? You might have heard that a CNC without an appropriate file to execute is nothing more than an expensive pile of junk. Which is exactly what we're left with at this point if we don't get some G-code file to draw on here. And before you jump online to find the next best G-code generator tool, wait, it isn't as easy as that. Remember how I said these pen plotters are a pain in the posterior? Well, all G-code isn't created equal, and by just having a G-code file to load into UGS, you haven't accomplished anything, because Gerbil likely won't be able to interpret it. You see, G-code is a huge programming language used for CNC's with all sorts of fancy capabilities, so it inherently includes a variety of commands Gerbil simply does not understand, being built for rather simple, traditional 3-axis machines that don't have these capabilities. As a result, if you tried to execute any random G-code file on your plotter, it will most likely throw up some error code to make you want to die even more. So we only need to generate G-code that runs on Gerbil, which shouldn't be too hard given the huge amount of Gerbil CNC's out there. Right? Right? Nope. Remember, our plotter doesn't have a Z-axis? Any G-code moving the Z-axis to plunge into the workpiece on a normal machine will do exactly nothing on our plotter, only executing the X and Y axes. The pen will not work. Once again, the weird specialty of our custom CNC comes back to haunt us. Not only did we need a custom version of Gerbil to control it, now we also need custom G-code to execute, which inevitably requires custom software to generate! 
So how do we go about this? First, we need a program to create the graphics we want the plotter to draw. Commonly used for this purpose is Inkscape, a free open source vector graphics editor so good industry professionals have to call it shitty to justify spending over $20 a month on Adobe Illustrator. Now, contrarily to what I said in the beginning of the video, I'm not going to freshly reinstall Inkscape simply because I use it a lot to make video thumbnails and many of the graphics you see in my videos, so I have templates and settings in there I don't want to lose, but it is advisable to start from scratch with the newest version here as well. And of course, if you haven't installed Inkscape in the first place, you should fix that in a hurry. Now, to turn any design in Inkscape into decode our plotter can execute, we need to install a special extension called Decode Plot. This plugin was specifically written for pen plotters using a servo controlling the pen, and therefore it lets us substitute the Z axis motion with any command we like. In the description, you'll find the link to the GitHub, where you once again have to download a zip file of the latest release, which then needs to be unpacked just like the other ones earlier. Then go on your hard drive, in case you have several, the one where the operating system is installed, and open program files where the Inkscape folder should be located. Once inside, open the folder share, and again Inkscape, where you should be greeted by a folder named extensions, seemingly filled with more junk. Now, if for some reason the first Inkscape folder isn't in program files where it usually auto-installs, just go looking for it on the hard drive. Once you found it, everything else inside should be the same. With the extensions folder prepared, open the unzipped G-code plot folder in downloads, select everything inside and drag it over to extensions. Here it will give you a warning and ask for administrator permission, which looks scary, but remember, in the unlikely worst case scenario where you really mess it up, you can still reinstall Inkscape to fix it, so give your permission to copy it over. Close everything, including Inkscape if you didn't do that beforehand, and that's it installed! Next, reopen Inkscape and draw whatever you want to plot. Make sure all outlines are converted to paths, otherwise it won't work. Now, I'll admit, this is about where things start to get over my head. Because of how f***ed up this entire pen plotter ecosystem is, I now need to mirror the entire drawing upside down before exporting the G-code just to make it appear the right way round on the plotter. If this sounds bad, that's because it is. You see, Inkscape has the origin of its coordinate system in the upper left corner of the paper, which makes X positive go right and Y positive go down, just like in any other office software suite out there. But for whatever reason, G-code plot has its zero point in the lower left corner, with Y positive going up instead. So everything I plot on a plotter where the origin is the upper left corner will be mirrored over the Y axis. And don't even try to put the zero point of the plotter somewhere else, or it stops working entirely. Seriously, these plotters are as messed up as CNC's get. Anyway, make sure everything is converted to paths, mirrored the right way, and most importantly, the stroke paint turned on, otherwise it won't draw an outline. Then go to File, Save As. In the drop-down menu, instead of SVG, select 3 axis gcode -plotter -g -code, and of course type in a file name. Once you press save, the gcode plot settings window pops up. Here we need to enter our preferences that will be applied to every gcode file we export. First, I'm gonna bump up the precision to 0.02mm to improve curve approximation. Then we have the left x coordinate. You see, lower y coordinate and left x coordinate is the origin, the lower left corner of the paper. And if you swap these around to try and put the origin somewhere else, you get an error message. I tried it! So you have to leave those at zero and just enter the right x coordinate, which corresponds to the width, as well as upper y to the height of your paper. Then all the z stuff we're gonna leave at default. And be careful, movement speed is in millimeters per second instead of per minute like in Gerbil, just to make things that little bit more difficult. So you need to divide your maximum reliable feed rate from earlier by 60 to get that number. Also, I generally make the draw speed slightly lower. Fitting and extracting tab, we're leaving everything at default, 
In drawing settings, I'm only changing the darkest shading to one millimeter. This is some handy stuff for getting the shading the way you want it, and the only settings you potentially need to change on a plot-to-plot -plot basis. The most important tab, however, is cutting settings. Tool offset, I'll put a zero, just like overcut, and here is the sole reason why I even bother with this crappy extension. I can enter any command I like for lifting and lowering the pen, and it will use these commands instead of messing around with the stupid z-axis that doesn't even exist on my plotter. So to raise the servo I have the stop spindle command M05, and to move the pen down M03 S40, 40 being the PWM value that gets sent to the servo. With that adjusted we can click OK to finish export. Now, if you thought that was it, and we can finally load the file into UGS to plot it, you're wrong again. If you directly open the resulting file with the Universal G Code Center and hit send, the only thing you get is an error message. Because apparently this Inkscape extension was actually built for a 3D printer, which I only realized after talking shit a few minutes ago. Needless to say, it includes commands Gerbil cannot understand in the G Code file. To work around that, we need to open the exported file with a text editor and delete the first few lines up to the first pen lift command. Then, if you want, you can scroll all the way down and add this line to make the plotter return to the zero point after finishing, cause G-code plot sadly doesn't do that on its own. After saving and closing the file, we can finally, finally open up UGS and load this modified G-code file to see it in all its glory mirrored upside down. But wait! Before hitting send, there is another thing to do. For yet another messed up reason, we need to enter an offset of 5 for the z-axis, cause if I don't, well, I get another error message telling me the imaginary z-axis hit a soft limit. Only after doing this, drum roll please, we can finally, 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 after so many struggles, click send for it to actually work. This took exactly 1 hour, 16 minutes and 15 seconds to complete, and the result is really, really nice. Now all the remaining inaccuracies you can see, like here where the shading goes over the line of the stroke, that is unfortunately unavoidable if you use these super cheap 28BYJ48 stepper motors, they just have too much backlash in the gearing. But overall, I am extremely happy with the result. If you're still watching, congratulations, now you know almost everything I know about programming these plotters. This is easily the longest and most detailed video I have ever made. Or should I say, five tutorials in one? Oh my gosh, I could have made so much more money splitting it into several videos and milking it! There is still two things worth mentioning, however. First, the necessity of having to flip the images before exporting the G-code can be eliminated by physically moving the Y-axis limit switch from the back to the front of the machine, thereby inverting the positive-negative directions of the Y-axis without Gerbil knowing about it. I remember I did that on my first pen plotter, so I didn't have to mirror all the graphics for that one anymore, but building this one I wanted to keep the wiring as simple as possible, so I thought, eh, you can just fix that in software later. But of course I can't fix it, since everything's messed up as hell. Second, having to manually delete the first few lines of the G-code can be eliminated as well. Even though I'm not at all familiar with Python, I snooped around in the folders comprising G-code plot, and in one script I actually found the section where it generates the startup block Gerbil cannot understand. Simply deleting that or replacing it with something else should solve the issue. That being said, it doesn't make much sense for me to do it since I still want that return to zero line added at the end, and I have no clue how or even where to put that in the Python script. 
Lastly, I would like to thank PCBWay again for sponsoring my content and putting up with my failures to stick to deadlines as well as my impromptu mental health break just now. They were very understanding about it, which I'm grateful for. Ever since I started this channel, I practiced meeting my self-imposed video deadlines for the day I would have a sponsor. And now, ironically, I seem to miss the deadline half the time due to my videos getting exponentially more advanced and time-consuming to make. Either way, PCBWay really are great to work with. Just wanted to say that. As usual, links to everything will be in the description. Except, as opposed to normal, I am not going to publish my modified working version of Gerbil. This video is supposed to be educational, and the only way to really learn things is by doing them. And besides, I wouldn't spend the entire video showing you how to do something just to give you the finished code to download in 3 seconds. Put in some effort, man! That said, over on my Patreon, which I'm still in the process of setting up, the full modified code will be available for download, along with engineering drawings and everything else needed to replicate all my projects. So if you enjoyed these videos and would like to support the work I do on this channel, from now on you can do so via the link below. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you didn't, then why are you still watching? If you found this video useful, please consider subscribing and leaving a like. And I will see you again in January, probably with part 3 of my Unipolar 3D printer. Bye!